Well, I'm back on the market again. <laughs> However, this time I decided to date men over 60. I was told they're more mature, very established. They know what they want. And all of their kids are grown and self-sufficient. I thought, finally, this is going to be exciting. <laughs> well, I got a roller coaster ride that went downhill fast. I dated this one guy. He was so old that I think he was a Gentile from the biblical days. Yeah, <laughs> he was older than Israel. <laughs> then I remember my grandmother used to tell us, baby, you young girls and women need to stay away from those old men because they got worms. <laughs> I said, worms? Grandma said, yeah, they got worms. Sure enough, I saw worms in his toilet coming out his feet Ooh. and rolling down his pants legs. Man, he smelled so rotten. It was the smell of death. I didn't know men over 60 with a lot of challenges. They had, they were set in their ways. They had health issues and they carried a lot of baggage. Emotional baggage. Oh my God, it was so much. Let's talk about them being set in their ways. They have very structured and established routines kind of like the military. <laughs> they are just not flexible, oh not compromising, nor open to new challenges. Sometimes it makes it extremely challenges to in challenging to introduce them to new activities and ideas into the relationship. Yeah, I dated this guy named Abendigo one time. He always kept his phone in a drawer because it just kept trying to update and change things. <laughs> he refused to use the GPS because he didn't want a machine telling him where to go. He said, that's your job. <laughs> he would bring his own pillar to the hotel because change, he said, was just too hard to sleep on. <laughs> he only bought a new car because his old one finally learned, learned to drive itself to work <laughs> oh yeah he would always bring a map to the grocery store <laughs> to make sure he followed the same route each time uh -huh. he always exercised by running in circles around his comfort zone <laughs> he refused to try new restaurants because he didn't want to change his foot, his footprints. <laughs> Finally, hide and go see was just never romantic because I could never get him to hide in new places. <laughs> After that 24 hour date, we woke up and I said, what did you say your name was again? He said, a Bendigo. I said, well, I'm Bendigo home. <laughs> <laughs> that was the second challenge. Oh, yeah, the health concerns. These guys have health concerns over 60. Severe problems. I dated this one guy. His name was Ru Russa Minchin. He had a hearing problem. And I remember I replied, oh, hi, Russ. I didn't know you had dementia. All I remembered on that day that we didn't finish was that it was reserved only restaurant. And from the time we walked in the door, he was talking so loud and constantly repeating himself. He would always say, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? I responded, yes, but I will prefer if your ass whisper. <laughs> About three minutes, <laughs> I said, what did you say your name was again? And I left. <laughs> <laughs>
Finally, there was Fred. He was in his 90s. I did not know his lack of high blood pressure medication caused him to have a heart attack until we woke up the next morning and after our first date and I found him hard as a rock and cold <gasps> as ice. Oh, thank you, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs>